galvanized. There's uh, this always reminds me of a uh, Judy had this family of um, Roma, like gypsies, living with him in Spain, and they used to use this stuff to barbecue meat all the time. I was like, so. but it's so bad. It's galvanized. Oh really? Yeah. It's like <laughs> it's not good for you. It's toxic. Okay. Okay, so 21 high. 21 for, and we'll, yeah. So we can just do, how Maybe we can get two of these out of here. Maybe, maybe we can. Oh, It's like the a really slow process, but I don't know. I like it. It's I used to rush through it and be so impatient with it because I just want to get to the casting part. But you know, I've learned to really like this process because there's a lot of problem solving and anticipating where the where the it's kind of like plumbing, like where the metal comes in where the gas escapes and all that, right? Probably gonna put in another one here. And there's a lot of timing involved because once you heat up the wax, uh, once you heat up the wax, if, if it's too soft, then it starts to fall apart. So you have to do a little bit at a time. So it's really a relationship with the material and understanding the characteristics of the material so that you can work with it rather than force your will on it, which I've matured in, in terms of my practice that way. It's all about relationships to anything, right? It could be relationships to your work, relationships with other people, relationships to material. Um, it all sort of relates to me. Uh, I, and they, you know, they inform each other too. So for me, it makes, makes sense to be aware of, and uh, like I don't typically silo things in my life. Like where I live is also where I work as well. I mean, some people might think that's unhealthy, but for me, it, you know, it just makes sense. And I try not to, you know, and if I need to change that, I change it. So to be responsive to my processes and, and the people around me and the situation is important because I don't think anything ever needs to be carved like in stone like as a contract for your, right? You should, I don't know, for me it works to be uh, flexible and responsive to whatever situation I'm in because it always changes, it never stays the same. But this, these processes definitely teach me how to be patient and then respect the other materials that I work with and their characteristics and, and the processes and rhythm involved like in those things. So we, again, it's like a dance, I guess. 
there's always a relationship. So it comes down to a relationship again, right? And maybe we'll pull out this uh, table here. Oh, James saved this. Sorry, I'm moving around. I love it. Do you? I hope it's... I use these ones last time. Oh, okay, cool. I started, I went to the U of M for art school thinking that I was gonna do filmmaking because I really loved film and video. Um, but then, you know, one of the requirements, you had to take a 3D course. So it could either be ceramics or sculpture. And I was, uh, I couldn't get into sculpture. So I reluctantly took ceramics. And I didn't really go for, and then I got the letter saying that you, you're gonna fail. <laughs> you should go to your class. <laughs> and so I started going and then I ended up really loving the process and um, uh, and so I ended up doing a concentration in ceramics which you know for me they all again relate like I don't see the difference really between ceramics and sculpture or uh, painting or like it's just a it's just an output right how I ended up doing like working with a lot of materials um, was actually, uh, I guess in grad school, uh, I was, well, I was pregnant. So uh, at that time I couldn't use the chemicals that I was using in ceramics. So I had to, you know, figure out other ways of working. Even though I, I didn't have any specific allegiances to material or process, you know, I was comfortable doing what I knew, right? And having my son really forced me to uh, challenge, you know, and just apply all that knowledge to other things, other disciplines, other mediums. I love this material too because you can recycle it. Oh yeah, um, the wax. Yeah, most of it. Yeah. So when we do the when we do the burnout, um, we collect the wax again. So we melt this wax out, and then it leaves the empty cavity in the investment, and then but we can recycle like we reuse the wax. So I think this wax. It's from some of this wax is from when Graham was here, so it must be like thirty-year-old wax. Yeah, I mean you lose some, of course, but but we also keep some. Okay, again, let's do this again. Yeah. 
That's so sick. What the hell? Really? Really? Yeah, no, it's sick. <laughs> it's awesome. This sounds like tortoise head. Like, what the heck? Really? Yeah, 100%. I thought it sounded Halloween. There you go, photos of Halloween. Oh, that's so cool. That's not. I wish you had the project file for this. Holy shit. Yeah, these are glazed right now, but they got to have to get fired still. So I was glazing, doing a little bit of glazing. And then the other thing that I'm doing is back here. You can see it. So, yeah. so I got to cut down some of this because, again, we're prepping for bronze. Mm. I have to finish this grinding. This is one of the, the leg things from my dad. It's heavy, eh? Like I have multiple works about that, about his death and, oh, more about his life and that process of, I don't know, living, I guess. Processing ideas of death and, and life and prolonging and, you know, you have all these assistive devices, all these medical things that, yeah, do help people, but then how are they also changing and redirecting how they behave or how, how is it impacting their life in other ways, right? So, um, and then also question the politics, right, of all of that. We're, we live in a capitalist neoliberal society, so who benefits? at whose expense, at what expense. Like it's all tied together, right? So um, understanding, you know, the whole, I guess, infrastructure of, of something as simple as like saline solution for dialysis, like then you start to see this bigger picture. Not that I, I'm in love with labor, because it's labor, it's hard, right? But um, I think the process is more what I'm, I'm sort of engaged in learning and figuring out things and, you know, problem solving and then synthesizing different kinds of knowledge and putting, seeing, like sort of alchemy, right? So I never know really how things fit together until I'm engaged in the process of doing them. Right? So that's what I find, I think, most interesting about an artistic practice. 